Show us how to live. Die a death that should be put upon us so that we may live. So that we may have freedom. So that we can come to a place like this and worship you openly, Lord. God, we thank you. We praise you. Lead us and guide us as we go through this night, Lord. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said.
believe that's true tonight? Yeah. Come on, let's sing this together. Who can stop? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Come on, every voice. Who can stop the Lord
anybody thank you for the name of Jesus? It holds power, it holds respect, it holds freedom, and he has broken every chain tonight, amen? Come on, y'all.
does everyone believe that tonight? No matter what you've been through, there's hope. No matter where you're going, there's hope, okay? There's not something where you're just hoping and there's no substance. We have substance in our hope tonight, church. We have substance in our hope tonight, and his name is Jesus Christ. That is our living hope. He's not dead in the tomb. He's not still on the cross, but he is living. He is raised. How do you believe that tonight? Come on, somebody. We're going to keep what we were doing last night. We're going to keep on going. We're going to keep on going. We're going to... Praise God in the midst of the battle. Amen. Amen. We're, we're in a fight tonight. We talked about it last night. It's not against flesh and blood enemies, but a spiritual being is coming against us, and he's looking to devour your soul. But there's only one way that he gets that, and it's because if you give it up, do not give it up. We're going to stand firm this week. We're going to stand firm this week, church. Amen. 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 All right. That's about all the preach I got. But once, so I made a. Thank you, sir. All right. Everyone give it up for Caleb Stolba. Come on. I know that God has a word for him tonight. So I want you guys to lean in to take good notes. Because you're about to be, you're about to hear what God has for you. Amen? Hey Amen. Well, welcome to night number two. So here, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to do something a little different, okay? You guys like different? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you right now, and I thank you so much for your presence moving in this place, and I can't wait to see what you have for us here tonight, God. Praise you for all that you do. Praise you for your creation. Praise you because you're glorious. Praise you because you're worthy. Praise you because you're true. God, I pray right now that you just continue to move in this place, God. That you're going to be touching lives here. You've touched mine. Lives are going to be changed. And when we leave here, they're never the same. I thank you for Rock Garden Camp, a place that we get to come just to get away, God. We get to get away and we get to praise you. We get to honor you. We get to glorify you. We get to learn about you. And I pray that you bless this word that's about to come out of my mouth, God. That this is not me. In Jesus' name, amen. As you can see, I probably won't make it through the service very good. So I want to... Everybody to stand up. Follow me. You can take your notebooks. Okay. So. Somebody tell me um, if you're, somebody here righteous? Is anybody here righteous? Okay. Does anybody know what righteousness is to be righteous? A couple of us. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna explain righteousness here. Um, righteousness, by definition, first we cover definitions first. I do anyways. Acting in accord with divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin, morally right or justifiable. That last word, justifiable, to be justified. Just as if I never sinned, right? Justified. You know, we always talk about the justice system. Cops, right? Cops are the first step of the justice system, then they go to law, and then they get tried, and all this justice system, right? That's what we, um, 
we call that, but that that's not really true justice. Because Jesus Christ is true justice. Jesus Christ is full truth. So, uh, why did you come out here? You're probably wondering, right? Where it's about to be. So, it's not quite there like it was a while ago. So, I stepped outside earlier, and uh, there was a hedge of clouds directly across the top of that tree line. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. I wish you guys could have seen it. There was a hole on that side. You see where that part of that hole is right now? There was a hole on that side. And the rays were shining through there. And as it was a glimpse of God's glory, See, so a few hours ago, we were out here, right? We were aggravated. Everybody. But here's what God does. In the middle of the trials, it's just a game, right? Just a game. But here's the deal. When we're passionate about something, when we're passionate about something, we want it even more. And here's the deal, I don't like to lose. And I know clearly you guys don't like to lose either. But here's the deal, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. How we handle ourselves and how we carry ourselves is a testimony to who we follow, right? Yep. How we carry ourselves. These, none of this is in my notes either, so it'll never come out the same twice, by the way. So if you catch it the first time, congratulations. If you catch it the second time, it'll be different than your neighbor. The way that you act and the, the way that you carry yourself. This is what is your testimony. I'm going to ask you a question here. Can, can you fake righteousness? No. Oh, you can. You can fake righteousness. It's not, it's not true righteousness. But you can fake it. Faking righteousness is you go through the motions. Guess what? I've been there. I've done it. And if you grew up in church, story is you've probably done it at some point too. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Faking righteousness is simply making it look, look as though I'm righteous. It's an appearance. But just acting isn't enough. Just acting isn't going to get you anywhere. And just acting, when the pressure's on, you'll crumble. Just acting righteous, you'll crumble when the pressure's on. So the reason we came out here is because I know it's just a game, but there's lessons in literally everything in life. The reason we're at this camp is to grow, right? The reason we're here is to grow a little deeper with our relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you didn't come for that reason, I guarantee you, you'll leave with that reason. You'll realize that, that that was essentially the reason that you came, even if you maybe didn't come for that purpose. But in a game that we're passionate about, that we're all flawed, I admit it, I'm flawed. Caleb is not righteous. 
Caleb cannot possess righteousness on his own. The only way Caleb can possess that righteousness is by Jesus Christ. Right. Isaiah 42, 6. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations. So that's kind of funny. So earlier this week at kids camp, it's kind of funny because we brought kids camp into youth camp, which is phenomenal. It's like the Holy Spirit knew what he was doing, right? When times are dark, what do we do? Shine Jesus' light. Right? right? <laughs> See, we all know it. Half of us know it. <laughs> but here's the deal. That is coexistent with righteousness. See, it says in Isaiah, he's called us to righteousness. And then he says, I'll give you as a covenant for the people. God's covenants aren't broken. Okay? Here's his covenant, a light for the nations. A light for the nations. You're called to be light in a dark world. We live in a dark world. We live in the middle of a dark world. And here's the deal. You are probably a minority. When it comes to being a Christian, when it comes to being a true Christian, you're probably in a minority. But guess what? When times get darker, the light shines even brighter. When times get darker, your light shines even brighter. See, the root of righteousness comes from truth, right? We talked about that last night. And I think we can all admit, us in our flesh struggle with truth even. We struggle with righteousness. Because we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that on our own. I want you guys to understand that. We, here's the deal. Clearly you guys are passionate. Clearly you guys are strong. Clearly you guys are able to compete. You guys are able to win challenges. But the game of life is more than a challenge. The game of life is not just one battle. The game of life is multiple battles. Hey, John, can you run in there and grab my thing in the front? By the sub and the sound booth. You got it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So we, we mentioned this morning salvation. So I, I want to touch on salvation, then we're going to go back to righteousness here. So salvation of the heart is essentially making the first step into righteousness. Salvation of the heart is essentially making the first step into righteousness. But here's the deal. When we read Ephesians chapter 6, um, you got your Bibles, go there. We're going to read it again. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse um, 13. We're going to start there. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. I'm reading out of the ESV. It's probably different than your, most of your NLPs. That you might be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, what we talked about last night. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. What is a breastplate? It covers your whole chest area, right? Covers covers your vital organs, right? Yeah. Well, it would hurt, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's what makes okay. me run. <laughs> I think I had that on. <laughs> it protects your vital organs. See, so this is a modern day 
Breastplate, thank you, Rob. So, a lot of your police officers and military combat and anything of any kind of combat, they're going to wear one of these. What for? Somebody raise your hand, tell me. Why, Raya? To, pr to protect their vitals, right? So, what is in your chest? Your heart, your lungs, your stomach. Heaven forbid that my stomach leaves, then I couldn't eat, right? <laughs> it protects your vital organs. Your physical body can't withstand any kind of blow to the chest area. Any kind of major blow, especially if it punctures the skin without having protection. Guess what? God takes the physical... And Paul's writing here through the Holy Spirit that Paul's writing with. And he uses these analogies to show us that we got to put a breastplate on. This is comparing it to our spiritual walk. See, we keep reading. The shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which, was the word, which is the Word of God. We're going to touch on that helmet of salvation. So we talk about salvation, and if you've been to um, Sunday school or, or kids' church or anything like that, you probably really get, you get talked about salvation. It goes, I mean, we all need salvation, right? That salvation, that, the first salvation you need that I talked about earlier, salvation of the heart or the soul or the spirit, you need salvation in order to to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the salvation that Paul talks about here is the salvation of the mind, right? So the salvation of the mind is a daily renewal, a daily reminder that we've got to strive. So here's the deal. You're never gonna you're never gonna do it on your own. But we have to make the choice that we're gonna follow what God has for us. We're gonna follow our Savior Jesus Christ. And that is a daily battle. That's the battlefield of the mind. Right. Good. That is taking every thought captive. You ever heard of the word captive? Being captivity? Guess what? All this relates to being in a battle. Right. And when you leave here, you're going to face a battle. Like, that's just a given. I promise you, you'll face a battle at some point. So... Salvation, by definition, is the preservation or deliverance from harm. But when salvation of the heart gives you life after death. But salvation of the mind gives you life during life. Good. Good. That's the Papa D line, the life during life. I love it. God has called you to life during life. Not just life after death. Right. You think God's creation beautiful? Come on. Even in a place here that was so challenging, so trying on our emotions, on our feelings, on everything in front of us, two hours ago, three hours ago, God still shines light on it. Amen. God still shines light on it. So when you leave here, every situation you're going to face, I promise you, you'll never forget the nine-foot kickball game. <laughs> and every time you remember that, remember that light right there, the one that's blinding you right now. Remember that light. Because on your hard times, on the times that you so bad want to be aggravated, shine Jesus' light. Because we are, we are essentially the moon. Yeah. We are essentially the moon. Yeah. We are a reflection of God's light. Yeah. That's all you are. So glad I was at kids camp this week. <laughs> We're a reflection of God's light everywhere that we go. 
Or maybe we're not. Mm. Mm. Come on. Or maybe we're not. That's, that's up to us. But here's what we do to reflect that light. The first thing you got to do is protect yourself. You got to know how to play defense before you ever learn how to play offense. See, I, I played sports in school. Defense alone doesn't win you ball games. Right. At some point, you got to score. Right. But offense alone doesn't win you ball games either. That's correct. It takes both of them. So we weren't real good basketball players in high school. <laughs> Put that out there. But we were the first team my senior year and like the last, well, since Coach Colley in early 2000s, to go over 500. Well, <laughs> early 2010s. No, I think it's 2007. Okay. <laughs> early 2000s. Our offense was horrendous. We averaged like 45 points a game. Like most teams average like, you know, 70, 80. We averaged 45. How did we win? We knew how to play defense. And we hustled. Here's the deal. When we're still trying to figure out how to play offense, your defense has got to be really good. Yeah. Yeah. When you're at a young age and you're just trying to step into learning how to play offense, you're just trying to learn how to step into understanding how the spirit moves and how, who God is and how he talks to us and how he communicates and how we're supposed to walk in that. You got to have really good defense. You got to take up the breastplate. Protect those vitals. Protect that mind. Because here's the deal, without a mind, we can't function either, right? Yeah. Takes a mind and vitals to function. See, once our head's protected, we put this on, we protect our heart, lungs, and stomach, but I want to mention this. Your body holds somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 gallons of blood. Okay? So that's like 10 units. Um, not a whole lot. Your chances of survival are next to none if you get blowed in the chest. Now, here's the deal. If you don't have this breastplate on, you're fighting on your own. Yeah. If you don't have the breastplate on, you're fighting on your own. And here's the deal. One blow, you're done. If I got this thing on, it's going to hurt. But it's not going to kill me. It's going to hurt, but it ain't going to kill me. So when you get a blow, when Satan throws an attack at you, it's going to hurt. I can't tell you, living for Jesus, it's not going to hurt. Because it is. Because when you're doing everything you possibly can to follow Jesus Christ, Satan can do everything he can to take you out. Right. Everything he can to take you out. So... The first thing, we, so spirit, mind, body. I want to mention that. Spirit, mind, body. Okay? Three things. Your spirit, man, inside you. Your mind, which is a choice, and our physical body is our action. So our physical body is what everybody sees, right? But righteousness transforms from the inside out. When you choose to have to follow Jesus and accept his complete righteousness, you're transformed from the inside out. It's got to right. start with the spirit. That's right. Good. It's got to start with your spirit. It's got to start in here. Because from in here, then you make the right choices. When you make the right choices, you make the right action. So you do get.
So there's two kinds of righteousnesses I want to talk about. There's two big words here I want to mention. Um, one is imputed and one is imparted. So imputed righteousness given to us at the moment of salvation. The moment that you ask Jesus Christ into your life. <coughs> Justification. Just as if you never sinned. Wipe clean. Slate's wipe clean. <coughs> but imparted righteousness. That's worked out every day after salvation. Sanctification. I'm going to let God do a deep work in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let God do a deep work in my life. That's a choice. That's why our helmet of salvation is so important to be tied with our breastplate of righteousness. Go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. <laughs> You're there, say, got it. But that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God and true Righteousness and holiness. <laughs> but it only comes with Jesus. It only comes with Jesus. See, we talked last night about a lot of the false, some of the false truths that you guys have, right? So, if you're reading 2 Timothy, I love, I love reading Timothy's, or the letters to Timothy. Because he's, uh, I feel like I'm in his shoes sometimes. Or a lot of times. Because Paul is trying to tell him what to do and what not to do. I feel like I need correction sometimes. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 through 26, probably what we're going to read, maybe. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living. So, just because... We have, um, just because we have imputed righteousness doesn't mean that we just stop pursuing it. Because that imputed righteousness doesn't allow you to walk in complete righteousness. Just because you were right one time doesn't mean you're right now. Just because you were right when you were 12 years old and you said a prayer, or when you... You accepted Jesus Christ when you were 16 years old. That doesn't mean that you're still in right standing with God. That's that's between you and God. I can't tell you that. But that's where your imparted righteousness comes in. That's you have to choose each and every day. Uh, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Huh? Crazy. West Side Kids, we just talked about the fruit of the Spirit, right? Yeah. Love, joy, peace, kindness. Oh, faithfulness. All three of those are right there with righteousness. Turns out they all go together. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Remember what I said this morning about your five closest friends? You're an average of them. <laughs> Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Again, I say don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach. Be patient with difficult people. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. So... Some of you probably think that I just put that scripture in here just now, but it's kind of cool. God knows exactly what we all need to hear. Because I put that in there like two weeks ago. 
God knows the beginning from the end, guys. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows exactly what we need at the given moment. <clears throat> if your spirit and your heart is made up and committed to righteousness, then we arm ourselves with the same way of thinking as Jesus. Go to First Peter four, chapter chapter four, verse one. I know it's a lot of scripture, but guess what? God's word is true and infallible. And that's what we're meant to live our life by. Yeah. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So I want to I want to mention also. So do we all know who the Pharisees are? I mean, the Pharisees are um, the religious leaders of the time of Jesus, and Jesus didn't get along with them, right? So in Matthew chapter five, verse twenty, this is red letters, by the way. It says, "For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds the scribes of the Pharisees." You will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, how in the world are we going to be more righteous than somebody who that's their complete job? The only thing that they're supposed to do is to learn, teach, and preach the word. They didn't even know who truth was. They didn't even know who truth was. But the only way you enter the kingdom of heaven is if your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees. So tell it to me that says the only way that I can experience righteousness is through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. I got one more scripture for you, and then we're gonna um, maybe start to wrap it up. We'll see where God goes. Isaiah 59. So I think this is really cool here. Isaiah 59, 16 and 17. This is Isaiah writing a few hundred years, probably a few hundred years, I think, before Jesus. And then Paul's writing 30 years or so after Jesus. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him. Who's he talking about? Anybody know? Jesus. God's own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. So, hundreds of years prior, so here's the deal, Paul knew the right. They still applied hundreds of years later. And they still apply today, guys. They still apply today. So essentially the same breastplate, even though to the visual eye, breastplates have changed over history. You guys made armor today, right? Or tried to. I don't know what it looks like. I haven't seen any of it. We'll find out in the morning what it looks like. I guarantee you every one of them is different. And throughout the history of time, armor has changed. They didn't wear this in medieval times in the 1100s, 1200s, whatever it was. I don't know. My history that well but I know I've seen countless pictures you know we always picture I always picture Roman soldiers when I think of armor you know they've got the breastplate with all the shiny metal and it's all cut out and contoured and probably really heavy <coughs> got this big old helmet with this big comb on it you know and then you have knights with this big face shield you know everything throughout the visual eyes of history has changed. 
but the spiritual side is the same breastplate. It's the same breastplate that Isaiah was talking, telling us to put on. It's the same breastplate that Paul was saying to put on. It's the same breastplate that we need to put on today. It's the same helmet we got to put on. It's the same renewing of our mind. Every day. <clears throat> Every day. God, we come to you right now, and I'm so in awe of your creation. I'm so in awe of your presence. I'm so in awe of the word that you have continued to pour out. God, I just pray that you continue to pour that out right now. I pray that you continue to pour that out because you have so much more for these kids. You have so many lessons to be taught. You have so many truths for us to know and understand. I pray that as we go throughout the remainder of camp here, God, that we make our choices to, <coughs> to follow your righteousness you have for us. And I pray that we understand what it means to put on this armor. Because our war is not with flesh and blood. God, I praise you for what you're going to continue to do tonight. You're not done yet. I know you're not done yet. I praise you for what's going to happen here, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we're going to head back to the church. You guys go ahead and go find all of them. Hey guys, if you would, let's go ahead and stand up. Let's enter into worship here a little bit. You guys are welcome to come to the front, whatever you need to do. Let's enter in here. Don't, don't miss out on what God has for you. See, just, just because I said put on the breastplate or put on the helmet, that's not all he's got here. That's not all he's got for you, okay? So you check yourself. You check your own heart. You check your own heart and figure out what, what else does he have for me? Does he have... Is he calling me to do something? Is he calling me to take another step? Or is it just, I just need to, I just need to fix myself to fit within his righteousness. So you don't have to wait to come to God until you fix yourself. He wants you to come to him right now. Because we can't fix ourselves, But God can. God can. He's the only way you can walk in that full righteousness. So enter in here.
Why don't you guys look up over the screen right there, okay? Oh, your grace so free. Watch over me. Aren't you thankful for his grace, right? Aren't you thankful that no matter what pickle we get into, God's grace covers it all right? And then this line right here, you have made me new. Now life begins with you. See, there, there is a life before Christ and there is a life after Christ. See, the life before Christ is worthless. It's meaningless. It's going to take you nowhere. But when you accept Christ, that life starts new right there. And that life can make a difference. Amen. Amen. I want to read you something right here in, in Ephesians chapter 4. It says, um, Paul saying, therefore, a prisoner, or therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord. This is Paul talking. Beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. See, when you, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and a new life begins, a calling goes upon your life. So he's saying, live a life worthy of your calling. See, because there's millions of people in this world that have a calling upon their life, but they're not leading their life worthy of that calling. Okay? He goes on to say, for you have been called by God. See, we've all been called by God. But here's the thing. The thing about a phone call is you can choose to answer it or you can choose to decline it. Right? You can either answer it or you cannot answer it. God is calling you this week. Are you going to answer? Are you going to answer God's calling? And he says, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with, with each other. That's hard for me. Making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit. The devil wants to create separation. The devil wants to create division among us as a body of believers, as a group of teenagers in this place right now, Satan would love nothing more than, do, than to just let us finish the week fighting with one another. And it's not just in this place. It's happening in our families. It's happening in our youth groups. It's happening in our churches. It's happening in our leadership team. It's happening everywhere because Satan, what does he do? He goes around like a roaring lion. And he's looking to deceive you. He's looking to, to just drive a wedge between you and someone that you love. He's trying to sneak in there and drive a wedge between you and someone that you're called to love. You're called to serve. You're called to lead. You're called. He would want nothing more than to create the separation. And then to create division among all of us, right? So it's funny that Paul says, I beg that you lead a life worthy of your calling, for you are called by God. Now you need to lead a life where you are unified in the Spirit. See, those two things go hand in hand. You cannot be walking out God's calling by living in a spirit of division with someone else. Okay? So make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. So we're going to talk a little bit about peace in the morning. 
See, peace is something that you get your, you, you have a foothold. The, the shoes of peace gives you a foothold to stand your ground. Because when the enemy comes against you, right, and, 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 the, and the attacks are, are on you and he's just bombarding you with all of these negative thoughts and, and all of these, these ideas that, that you know aren't from God, God gives peace in that moment. God gives peace in that moment. And we're able to withstand. We're able to stand firm. We're, ed- we're able to stand our ground. Because God said you are called. See, each and every one of you has a calling upon your life. Whether you realize it or not tonight, you do. And we have, we have this conversation every year. But there are some people that are called and yet they never walk in the calling. And here's the thing about a gift, because that's what a calling is. It's a gift from God, even though sometimes, like right now, it seems like, why, God, would you ever burden me with this? But it's to show hope. It's to show love. It's to show mercy. It's to show grace. It's to show that we are the light In everything that we do, in every step that we make, in every conversation that we have, we need to be emulating that light. Right? We need to be proving to the world that the Christian people are the most blessed. But yet, we have the greatest retirement plan of all time, and yet we walk around like we're defeated. God gives us the victory through the blood applied. Right? Right? So we need to be unified in the spirit tonight. Make tonight the night that says I'm going to take all of those chains that have been holding me down, that have been dragging me away from my friends, been dragging me away from my parents, been dragging me away from youth, been dragging me away from the church, been dragging me away from whoever and whatever. We're going to break those chains tonight. We're going to act in unity in the Spirit. And we're going to lead a life worthy of our calling. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just ask that you use this moment to bring clarity, to bring peace, to bring bring trust and honesty. God, because you're all of those things. And if we're leading a life worthy of your calling, then, then we have those things in us. God, I thank you for the blood applied. I thank you that you made a way where there seemed to be no way. And for some of these students tonight, they feel like there is no other way. They feel like this is just the way it's going to be. They feel like this is the way I got to act. They feel like that's just who I am. But that's not who God, God called you to be. That's not who God called you to be. To be the outcast. To be the ostracized. See, this isn't an exclusive place. This isn't an exclusive God that we're serving. We serve an all-inclusive Father. And there are some of you maybe tonight that are thinking, I'm just not worthy enough. I'm just not righteous enough. Maybe I said that prayer at six, but I'm not in right standing with God tonight. There's no way that he's going to take me back and you'd be wrong. Because his mercies are new each and every day. And I really think it's new each and every moment doesn't matter where we've been. It doesn't matter what what way we're going. 
God can change the trajectory of your life in a moment, in a blink of an eye. Maybe you're here tonight and you're thinking, I just, I, I just can't make that step. I just, I just don't have enough faith in the unknown. Don't let fear of the unknown dismiss what you do know. And what you should know tonight is there's a God who loves you. There's a God who's standing there with open arms ready for you to run right into his chest. And maybe you were here last night and you're saying, I, I, I missed it. I missed it. I didn't go in the prayer line. I, I, I didn't ask anyone to pray for me, but I felt like I just needed someone. I felt like I just needed a, a touch from someone. You didn't miss it. Because here's the thing about God. He is always ready. He is always there. Don't let that feeling go away tonight. Don't let that light burn out tonight. No matter where you've been, no matter where you think you're going, God can cause the change in your life. And a new life can begin tonight. You're saying, well, I, I, I'm saved. I, I've said that prayer. But maybe you need to go just a little bit deeper tonight. To break those chains of that division. To break those chains of that separation. You just need to go a little bit deeper tonight. Here's the thing. You owe it to yourself. Because I don't want you to live one more second with regret and with guilt and with condemnation. God can wipe all of that away in just a moment. But you have to make the choice. You have to take the next step in your journey to start li living that life worthy of the calling that is set upon you. So we're going to bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes. Okay? And if that's you tonight, if any of those things are you tonight, I want you to not walk, but I want you to run to someone. Someone that you trust. Someone that you know will pray over you. There's a building full tonight. Make that next step for yourself. Make that next step for yourself. Because if you're living in division and if you're living in separation, then you're living apart from God. And that's not your calling. So I'm going to pray and you guys are just going to make your way in that moment. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you that, that there are students in this building tonight, Lord, that want to go deeper with you. That want to have a bigger part in you, God. That want to understand your love and understand your grace and understand your mercy, Lord. Because maybe they lived in a place where there was none. Maybe they, they, they've lived a life where everything they've done was just wrong. And they feel condemned in that moment. But God, we thank you that you wiped the slate clean. We thank you that you take every, every heart, you mend it back together, and you make it new. God, we love you. For those that are out there and you're you're still hanging on, you're you're still you're you're saying, well, I I I don't know. I don't think he quite got it right right there. 
You're second guessing yourself. Just go. Just do it. I'd rather be living in freedom for the next week and the hereafter than waiting to the last night to get what God already gave me yesterday. God has given you this gift. All you need to do is receive it. All you need to do is accept it and then to use it and to lead a life worthy of the calling because you have been called by God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I want you guys to be honest real quick. If, if, if part of that, where, where you know that you felt like you've been called to do something and, and, and you've never expressed it, would you be bold enough to come up here? Would you be bold enough to say, you know, there's something working on the inside of me. I feel like maybe God has called me to do something. But maybe I just don't quite know. Would you be bold enough for God in front of all your friends to come up here? Don't leave it. Don't leave it tonight. God is, God is calling you to deeper things. God is calling you to bigger things. God is calling you to something that is bigger than you, greater than you. Don't miss out on where God is taking you. Don't miss out on what God is calling you to do. Because as soon as you start walking in that, God's going to bless every single step that you take. I feel you guys trembling. I know there's like three people. Three of you. Okay? So these guys will play all night. I'm just joking. Don't give up. Where's Mark? Come here, Mark. Michael. And Ashley. And Simon, will you guys pray for these? One, two, three, four, there are five of you, okay. Not discerning like I used to be. All right, if there's anyone else, we got lots of other people praying. Go ahead, let's just start praying.
You know, while they're praying, Caleb, he said something that really uh, triggered something. You know, on that soccer field, in so much pain, right? So much turmoil, so much strife. God let the sun shine on that place, didn't he? Maybe you're dealing with something tonight. And it's in a deep, dark hole. And you're like, there's no way God's light could ever shine in that area of my life. I'm here to tell you that in every dark situation, in, in every spot where you think it just could not get any better, the smallest light will light up the darkest of areas. So maybe there's something that you're dealing with tonight. I want to let you know that there is hope in that situation because of nothing other than the substance that we put our hope in, and that's God. Amen? Amen.
I don't know. Fire now. There we go. Got some power. Anybody else get some power tonight? I remember that. Anybody get filled? Anybody ready to get filled some more? Yeah. We're just getting started, guys. We're just getting started. It's going to keep growing. Keep growing. Keep digging. Dig a little deeper and a little deeper. None of us have arrived yet. We keep growing. When you get my age, you keep growing. When you get as old as John, you keep growing. When you get to Papa D's age, you keep growing. You just keep digging a little deeper. Because your light will shine a little bit brighter and a little bit brighter. And we might as well have life during life. Right? Might as well have life during life. True life comes in the midst of righteousness. God, we come to you right now once again in in all of what you've done. And we thank you for everything that's taking place tonight, God. And we can't see, can't wait to see what else you've got in store for the rest of this week, for tonight, for devotion time tonight, for uh, each and every minute while we're at this camp, God. We speak blessing over the remainder of this week. I speak blessing over each and every student here tonight and throughout the remainder of this week. I speak blessing over them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, you guys.